welcome to another video on my channel. Um, today's video will be all about this paneling that you can kind of see behind me. Um, I posted this on my Instagram um, the other day. I've had a massive response to it. Everyone absolutely loved it. So thank you so much for all your comments. Um, but a lot of you actually want to try it yourself. So I thought I'd do a video just explaining how we did it, what we used, and um, what paint colours, etc. I thought I'd do one YouTube video, put everything together and try and help you guys out. So as you can see behind me, the wall is already complete. Um, unfortunately, we didn't video it as we were doing it, which is such a shame. But hopefully I can try and explain all the steps. The reason I am sitting so far over this way is because I'm gonna pop some photos up here. I took lots of photos as we were doing it of all the stages. So I can pop these here with a couple of videos as well, just so you can see exactly how we did it. Just wanted to say, I am no DIY expert. <laughs> I am not a decorator or anything like that. We just thought we'd have a go at doing it ourselves and it came out pretty well, to be honest. So, first things first, um, let's get started. So, I'm going to pop up a picture next of all the things that you will need um, to complete your paneling wall. <laughs> Okay, so step one, you need to make sure your wall is as smooth as possible. So any gaps that you've got, any cracks, any holes, just get some filler, fill all those in. Um, the wall needs to be as perfect as possible because you're going to see a lot of it. So this section here is all just wall and then you're sticking your MDS pieces on top of that wall. Just make sure it is literally as perfect as possible. Um, we actually had all of our walls replastered when we moved into the house so we knew it was perfectly smooth. But if you've got any lumps and bumps, just get a bit of sandpaper, sand them down, make sure it's absolutely perfect. So I would also suggest, um, if you haven't already, maybe using a white wall because your MDF once it goes on the wall is going to be primed. The primer is usually white, so to make sure the colour that you're putting on is exactly the same as it is on the wall as the MDF, working with a white wall will probably work best. Okay then, so on to step two. Um, next thing you need to do is measure your wall and find out how many squares that you need. Um, this is probably the trickiest part of the whole process. Um, so, I'm going to try and explain this to you and hopefully this makes sense. Okay, so let's try and explain this now. So you need to measure the width of your wall and the height from floor to ceiling. Um, then you need to take into consideration these MDF pieces here. So these are 10 centimetres each on ours. You can have them a little bit smaller if you like. You just need to take that into consideration with your measurements. So, once you have your width, you then need to work out how many of these MDF pieces you will have going down. We have six on our wall going across, so you would take 60 centimetres from the measurement you've just taken for the width. And then what you need to do is divide that number by the amount of squares that you have on your wall. So we have five, so we take that number and divide that by five. That would then give you the width of each square in centimetres that you need. So then you would do exactly the same to get this measurement here. So you do exactly the same from the height measurement that you've taken. So our squares, you can see it properly here, aren't like proper squares. Um, this length is slightly longer than this length. It just depends on how they are going to fit on your wall size. So they don't have to be perfect squares. I mean, you can't really tell unless you go up close that these are different measurements. I really hope that made sense. It's so hard to explain. Um, if you still don't understand and you want some more clarification, just drop me a message or drop me a message on Instagram or something and I'll try and help. Um, but yeah, so the next step that I took was to create a drawing and the drawing had all of the measurements on for each square and the 10 centimetre gaps in between. Um, this just made it easier to show being cute or Salco, whoever you take your wood to to get cut. Um, just to show them exactly what you're looking for, so you have it in a picture to show them. So then once you've got all your measurements and you've got your drawing, the next step is to take that to your local B&Q or Salco. Um, make sure they offer a cutting service before you go just to avoid a wasted journey. But you can actually buy the MDF sheets in both B&Q and Salco. Um, we use a 12mm thickness MDF sheet. Um, and this 
whole wall is actually only one piece of MDF. We managed to get the whole thing out of just one piece, which is amazing. So you just need to go to the cutting counter in B&Q or Salco or any other place that offers a cutting service. Show them your drawing, explain that you need the lengths of MDF. Um, for example, this one here goes all the way down. This shorter piece is then stuck on afterwards, but you'll get more explanation in that further on in the video when you see me actually putting them onto the wall. So I just wanted to say also that in being human style co at the moment they're offering the first five cuts are free. Anything after that will be 50p per cut. Um, to be honest, because the guys in Salco blessed them, they didn't understand what I was trying to do. They made a couple of wrong cuts to start off with, so we were in there for a while. <laughs> but they eventually got it right. Um, but because they kind of messed up the first piece of MDF, they just didn't really charge us for the rest of the cuts. So I think we paid like £5 for the cuts. But if you work it out in lengths, it won't actually be that many cuts. So once you get home with your pieces of MDF all nicely cut, um, if you manage to get them in the car, that is, because it adds up to hang out the window in my little Scirocco. Um, yeah, once you get them home, you can then start fixing them onto the wall, which is the exciting bit. So, first thing you would need to do is secure your top and your bottom pieces. The four outer edges are going to be your base to make sure they are like dead straight. Um, to do this, just use a spirit level and make sure you prop that against each piece as you're sticking it on just to make sure they are definitely straight. So the next pieces that you'll want to secure to your wall will be the left piece and the right piece just to give you your box and make sure that it's all dead straight. So. Right here now, you should see a photo of the top and the bottom pieces of MDF on the wall. So to add your MDF to the wall, to stick it to the wall, um, you need to get your no more nails, put that in a zigzag all down the back of your piece of MDF, push that onto the wall, applying a tough pressure. We did this for about a minute, we held it in place for about a minute just to make sure it wasn't gonna come off. So put your line of no more nails, prop that on the wall make sure you use your spirit level so you probably need two people to do this my boyfriend helped me do this so we just used two of us it was absolutely fine um apply pressure to that piece just for about 60 seconds just to ensure that it's definitely stuck and there's no gaps and then you can release the next pieces you'll want to attach are your vertical ones which go down so this one this one all of those longer ones which are going from top to bottom so i just wanted to show you to work out where your piece is so these vertical pieces are going to go all i did was got a measuring tape measured from this distance to this distance using your drawing or your diagram that you drew up previously then mark 10 centimeter then mark the measurement again 10 centimeter and do that about three times down the wall just so you know where this is going to go making sure that's straight as well and then you can go ahead and stick these pieces on so exactly the same process as sticking the top ones on and the side ones on after you've stuck on your vertical ones you then want to stick your smaller pieces so this piece here you want to stick those on so exactly the same process with your no more nails, hold and get in place for 60 seconds just to make it secure. Make sure you use your spirit level throughout the whole thing and then just mark onto the wall with a little pencil with a measuring tape, your measurements just to make sure the gap for your squares is exactly correct. I'm going to pop, they should have been playing a little video here, a little time lapse that I did um, when we did this, so hopefully that helps as well. Once all of your MDF pieces are stuck on your wall, it should look something like this. Um, <laughs> hopefully that worked. Um, so yes, next thing you need to do is caulk. Caulk makes such a difference to the finish on the wall, so do not miss this step. So caulk all around the edges, of each square this is quite time consuming it took me a couple of hours to do it just to make sure every single gap was filled um, it makes such 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 difference to your finish you don't miss this step so once you have caught all your edges you then want to go over with some filler and fill in any gaps that you may have on your wall um, as is a 1930s house walls are all a bit squiff so we had to fill her in all along the top because even though the MDF panel was straight with the spirit level, um, the wall wasn't. <laughs> so we had to fill her all around the edges, like the far edges, 
um, like just here, just to make sure every single gap is filled and then you're ready to move on to the next step. So after you've caught and you've filled, I would leave this to set. Um, we left it overnight just to be careful, but the manufacturer's instructions should be on the part of filler or the cork just to tell you how long it needs just to set. Um, then you can move on to the painting, which is my favorite bit. Um, so first thing you need to do is paint the wood primer, um, which we had on the list previously. So the wood primer that we got was white. Um, so when you are painting the wood primer around, we did two coats of primer just to make sure that the wall, that the wood was as white as possible um, because any gaps of showing the wood colour through might affect the colour and the finish at the end, which we didn't want. Um, so two coats of wood primer. When you were doing your primer, top tip, um, don't leave any drips. It is really hard not to leave drips when you're trying to paint in the edges. So what I found was I had a larger brush for like the main areas, the larger areas, and then I had a really narrow, thin brush just to go around the little gaps and the edges in the corners, just to make sure there was no drips, because you will see drips on the final product, and it's such a shame when you've got a big drip down your wall. You don't want that. So, I've just run downstairs, so I'm a little bit out of breath. Um, I just thought I'd go and grab the primer that we used, just so I can show you which one we had. And um, this was about nine pounds, might be a little bit more from B and Q. This is the wood primer that we used. So it's just a white wood primer. So once your two coats of primer are on, leave those to dry. I think it's about four hours per coat to leave in between. So leave it for a night and then paint your colour the next day. Um, then you can move on to your colour painting, which is exciting because I could not wait to get this colour on the wall. Um, I've been looking for like a warm grey, greyish colour for a long time and I couldn't find it. So I finally found this colour. Um, this is Ammonite Fire and Ball. Um, but we got it Valspar colour matched at being q because Ammonite's pretty expensive. So this is the Farron Ball test the pot that we bought just to test colour at first. And then we got it colour matched at Valspar, which is just in B&Q. And for this whole wall, this is a 2.5 litre tub. This still has about half left in it and that's with two coats. So you don't actually need that much paint. I'd, if it's about the same size as this, I'd go safe for the 2.5 litre, um, because the 5 litre you probably wouldn't need that much. So I was actually pretty shocked at the Valspar Colour Match service. Um, they matched it pretty much exact. I'll pop a photo here um, just to show you the difference between the Farron and Ball colour and the Valspar Colour Match. Um, it's pretty much identical. You can't really tell, so I was really chuffed with that. So apply two coats of your chosen colour to your wall, leave to dry, and then you are finished. Hopefully it looks amazing. Um, I think panelling is just so lovely. It gives like a really elegant effect to the room and just gives it a bit of depth as well, rather than just being a flat white wall. Um, when we first moved into the house, we just did white walls everywhere and it was just because I wasn't really sure what I wanted, but seeing panelling, I was like, I need to have that, that is amazing. Um, a couple of the girls on Instagram have done it and I'm like, wow, that looks so good. So, here we are. I'll do some close-up shots of the wall, now it's all finished. Um, hopefully you like this video, um, hopefully I helped. If you need any more clarification with the measurements, because I know it is so hard to explain, it probably didn't make sense, hopefully it did. But if it didn't, just drop me a message, drop me a comment, I'll try my best to help you through that as well. struggling with this lighting at the moment it is getting darker by the second so we will leave this video here for today and um, hopefully if you are looking to do paneling this helps a little bit um, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video bye